gonna catch my breath after pushing the car and then I'll give you guys a quick wrap up. Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Reviews. My name's Ryan and today I've got something I'm pretty excited to share with you. We're gonna be doing a range test with my Model 3 rear wheel drive. Uh, we're just getting charged up right now. The weather's really nice uh, and we're, we're gonna be getting on the road soon. Let me tell you a bit about it. As you can see, we're currently charging up and I wanted to take a moment to explain the 70 mile per hour range test and all of our testing procedures. So this morning, I filled up all the tires while they were cold to the manufacturer recommendation. That was 42 PSI. Of course, right now we are DC fast charging and that'll get the battery nice and warm. We're going to use the most efficient drive setting possible. In this case, it's the chill mode. We're going to go 70 miles per hour and that's a GPS speed up on the highway, which is just behind us. We'll use gentle accelerations on the highway uh, and we'll start here in Wellington. We'll drive north to Cheyenne and then eastward along Nebraska. And the whole time we're going to be avoiding drafting other trucks and other vehicles. We're gonna keep that 70 miles per hour GPS speed and stay on the highway for as long as we possibly can. Once the battery is getting very low, we're going to be hopefully nearby this charger and we can take some frontage roads which are right next to the highway. And of course, we're going to use all of the battery and that includes all of the hidden buffers. So again, we have the Model 3 rear wheel drive here. It's the entry level Tesla and we have the regular 18 inch wheels with the aero covers. It has the stock Michelin MX M4 tires uh, and it has a 60 kilowatt hour LFP battery. It's rated for 272 miles on the EPA cycle. I don't know if we'll get quite that much, but we'll see how far we get. Additionally, I've put about 6,000 miles on this vehicle, so it's still pretty fresh. There's not too much degradation. Something I'd also like to put, uh, point out are all these new ChargePoint Express Plus units. They were very recently installed and significantly faster than the CPE 250s that used to be here. The weather today is great. It's a bit toasty in the high 80s, but there's very little wind, about five to 10 miles per hour. A little bit further down in Nebraska, there is a bit more of a wind, about 10 miles per hour, and that would be a crosswind for us. I'd like to avoid that since that will affect our results quite a bit. So what we're going to do instead is going to drive up I-25 like normal and then get onto I-80 East like normal. But we'll turn around uh, fairly shortly after we get into Nebraska and we'll avoid those crosswinds and we'll continue looping around on I-25 and I-80 until we're at very low battery. At that point, we can then come to these frontage roads right around here and run the battery out all the way to zero. We're currently just doing some of the top balancing, get the last bit of energy into the pack. I wanted to show you that I also have scanned my Tesla, shout out to Bjorn, and this will help us. Uh, specifically, we can see nominal remaining, that should be the number that we're looking at. That's how much battery we have left, and I want to get that below one. That's my goal. Charging has stopped, so it's time to unplug and get going. You'll join me once we're on the highway. We are merging onto I-25 North, just beginning the range test. We're aiming to have a gentle acceleration and hit 70 right at the end of this, so... Right there, looks like we're good. And now we can lock it in, and I've already checked, and 71 indicated is 70 GPS, so we can get started. Here we are, it's been uh, just about 10 miles and you can see the efficiency is actually pretty poor. Part of the reason for that is because we're actually going just a little bit uphill as we head towards Cheyenne. And that's part of the reason why it's so important that we do these loop style out and back range tests. It's so that we counteract any sort of elevation gain as, as well as any sort of wind. Any sort of headwind would then turn into a tailwind on the return leg. So I'm continuing on I-80 East and something has happened and that something is called phantom braking. That was actually the third time it's happened in uh, less than 40 miles. Unfortunately, that's just something that I've noticed can happen. I don't know if it will be fixed or if it's fixable, but it's definitely a frustrating problem to happen when the road looks like this and then I get a bunch of beeps and it slams on the brakes. Hopefully there'll be a fix. We just hit 75% state of charge, 52 miles on the odometer on this trip. 
which would mean we'd make it a bit over 200 miles. But something that I've really noticed is the efficiency has been improving a ton. The pack temperature is pretty hot still. So what I'm thinking is that the first 10, 15 minutes, uh, I guess maybe like 10, 15% of the battery, it was uh, cooling down the pack since it was so hot from DC fast charging. Presumably that used a good bit of energy, which is part of the reason why the efficiency was not very good. But for a while, we've seen this number uh, drop really quickly. Hopefully we'll continue to see it drop. I think that we can get a lot more than just 200 miles. Okay, we're reaching our turnaround point, Kimball, and uh, we're just above 60% state of charge, which is usually about where we turn around. I know earlier I mentioned that I might turn back a bit early to avoid some crosswinds in Nebraska, but it looks like we mostly avoided all of it, so we don't necessarily need to do as much looping. Now we're just going to gently decelerate using regenerative brakes, putting energy back into the battery, and then we're gonna go back onto I-80, except this time we're gonna be going west. We're back going westbound on I-80. One more thing I wanted to show you guys was we've been about 94 miles since the start, and if you see, our efficiency is way better than it was in the beginning of our trip. Now, again, we have to go back, uh, so that will counteract any sort of tailwinds we might have had, as well as elevation. But I think those are some good numbers, and I think we'll see some pretty good range here. Here we are, uh, 106 miles, and again, great efficiency here. We just hit 25% state of charge. We have traveled 174 miles, and we are looking at about 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour, a bit above that, actually. It's looking really good. We're on I-25 south back toward Wellington. I think we're gonna get back to Wellington with plenty of charge so we can stay on the highway. I think we'll turn around so we can maintain the 71 miles per hour. But while we're doing this range test, we're also gonna be passing a milestone. I'm kind of excited that we can share it together. If you look right there, that is our odometer in kilometers. 9999. Thanks Bjorn. But we're about to hit 10,000 kilometers on this and I'm some time later. And 10,000. That's 10,000 kilometers on our odometer. Awesome. So there's our exit where we start and stop our range test. However, we've still got 23% battery. We've gone 188 miles and we're doing over 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. We've got plenty of range, so I'm gonna go down to the next exit south, flip a Yui, and then hit on I-25 north, and then just Loops on I-25 until we're low state of charge. I'm back on I-25 northbound. My plan is just to make these loops on I-25 until I am very low state of charge. What I've done is I put the come and go into the uh, route planner and that will take us there. Notably, it will not turn on battery preconditioning so we won't lose any energy to that. But it will tell us about what percentage we should arrive at. And I'm going to be using that to help me get there at the the right percentage. Uh, of course, I will run it all the way down to zero, but I don't want to get stuck on the freeway. We're continuing on our loops. I wanted to point out, once we got to about uh, seven or eight percent, the little battery symbol right there turned from yellow to red. Additionally, it looks like we'll be making it back with two percent state of charge, which I think is uh, very reasonable. Of course, we will run it all the way out but we'll be doing that on frontage roads. We're exiting the highway for the very last time. We've got 2% battery. Those are our stats, 246 miles at 70 miles an hour. Not bad. However, if we look down here, it says we have 1.21 kilowatt hours, 1.33 kilowatt hours remaining of usable and four kilowatt hours, including the buffer. So let's go ahead and use those up. Here are the frontage roads. We are right next to I-25, and the speed limit's 55, so we can't quite make it to 70, but we can still keep the speeds up pretty high. We're still at 2% state of charge, and those are our numbers. I would like to have less than one kilowatt hour nominal remaining to finish our uh, range test. So we've got some time left. We just received this message from our route planning. Charging needed to reach destination. I think we've got enough. We've got plenty, so we'll keep going. Okay, we're at 0%. We've used all of the battery, and now we're starting to use the buffer. 
Interestingly, I'm not getting any power limitations. You would see the dots up there, but they're not here yet, meaning we've got uh, still plenty of voltage. Well, unfortunately, it has happened. Uh, I am, if you look up there, you can see the McDonald's arch. That's where I'm supposed to go. Unfortunately, I don't know if I'll make it. Nope. Hopefully, I can stop, restart, and get there. Some time later. So, uh, I got out of the car and then got back in. That would be able to restart it and give me a tiny bit of power. I did that a few times and I ended up stopping right here. Rats. Huge shout out to those two guys. As you saw previously, I ended up dying with the car about 100, 150 feet away from the charger. Fortunately, I was able to get it into tow mode and just pushed it over here. So we should be able to just plug in and get going. I'm gonna catch my breath after pushing the car and then I'll give you guys a quick wrap up. Okay, we made it back and we're finally charging, which is great. So, a quick wrap up. The Model 3 rear wheel drive ended up going 264 miles with over 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. We used 59 kilowatt hours. And again, we used all of the buffer. And uh, for those of you who were paying attention, please keep in mind when you're using the nominal buffer, you may not have the entire thing available to you. But I think overall, it was a successful range test. We are able to get it done. And I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say. I think this is a fantastic result. Well over 260 miles from the base Model 3. Wow. Um.